Howdy folks, we are talking the Glorious Revolution, which happened about 350 years ago. We're going to cover some time before that as well. Your goal for the screencast is you should be able to say at the end of it, I can explain all three aspects of the revolution's model for the Glorious Revolution. How are you going to prove to me that you can do this? A couple different ways. You're going to use page six, which is your revolution's note taker. You're also going to use your notes, which may be bullet points. It could be Cornell notes. It could be a concept map. Whatever works for you, that's how you're going to show me that you watch the screencast. We'll start with this dude, King John, who ruled England a very long time ago, fought some expensive wars, and uh, needed money to pay for taxes and kept overtaxing the English people. He also imprisoned people who disagreed with him. Uh, he was forced to sign the Magna Carta in 1215 by a group of noblemen. This led to lots of changes, which we've already discussed. However, these rights only applied to the upper classes. The lower classes in England still had very few rights and didn't really have anybody speaking up for them. England gains a parliament around the year 1300, uh, which had two houses, the House of Lords, which was the really, really rich people, and the House of Commons, which is the less rich people. Um, our parliament similarly has two houses. Um, the, we have the Senate and the House of Representatives, so it's based on that model loosely. Um, parliament viewed itself as a partner to the king. They felt like they were kind of co-ruling England together, and they voted on laws. They pa voted on laws. They voted on taxes. They gave advice to the king. However, this dude, James I, who ruled uh, England at the turn of the 17th century, um, used the divine right of kings to ignore Parliament's demand. And what the divine right of kings was, was this belief that kings got their right to rule from God, and therefore they didn't have to listen to Parliament or anybody else in their country. They, since they got their power from God, they could do whatever they wanted. Because of this, he ruled as an absolute monarch and generally ignored what Parliament had to say. Following him was Charles I, who needed money to fight wars. Uh, he was still ignoring Parliament, and when they didn't give him money to fight wars, he said, all right, adios, enough with you. Um, eventually he has them arrested, but we'll get to that in just a second. <clears throat> in 1628, something called the Petition of the Right was signed, and this was created by Parliament in an attempt to limit uh, the king's powers. These demands in the Petition of Right included no new taxes without permission from the Parliament, as well as no arrests or imprisonments without reason. You might recognize these from da -da -da -da, the Magna Carta. After signing this, Charles was given more money to fight his wars, and he was happy. However, Charles soon began to ignore this petition and kind of did what he wanted. The English Civil War was fought for about seven years. It began after Charles tried to have members of Parliament arrested. Uh, it was fought between supporters of Parliament and supporters of the King. Uh, the supporters of the King ended up losing, and Charles was beheaded in 1649. This was kind of a big deal because kings had been killed on the battlefield or in secret, or they had been overthrown, but no king had been put on trial and was publicly executed. And so after... Charles gets his head cut off, uh, supporters of Parliament take control of it. After the Civil War, Oliver Cromwell, the leader of the pro-Parliament side of the army, led England. He ruled for about nine years, the last five of which he was a dictator. Um, and then a couple years after he died, uh, Charles II was invited to rule England as king. This was the restoration of the monarchy in England. Charles II rules for 25 years and rules with limited power, with kind of support from Parliament. His brother, James II, rules for three years. Um, he takes the throne when Charles dies, and this is when things start to get crazy. He was Catholic, and most of England was Protestant. Um, Catholicism and Protestantism are both kind of two, two brands of Christianity, um, and they did not get along super well in England in this time period, and people didn't really trust him because he was Catholic. His oldest daughter, who would become queen after James II died, was a Protestant, though, so people were cool with him kind of saying, yeah, okay, you're Catholic, we're not a huge fan of you because we know we've got a Protestant coming to rule. The Glorious Revolution happens when James II has a son and baptizes him as a Catholic, and this tells the English people that, in fact, Mary will not be their queen and that they will have a Catholic king, not a Protestant queen. And this really bums people out. The citizens, obviously, not super psyched about having another Catholic king, given that they're all Protestants. And Parliament invites Mary and her husband, who was Dutch, to come and take the throne in England. And there's William. 
he was a prince in the Netherlands uh, and sailed to England with an army, but James, kind of seeing the writing on the wall, didn't decide to fight against William and Mary, and he left without a fight. And this was called the Glorious Revolution because there was no violence. James II willingly left, and William and Mary became, became king and queen of England. <clears throat> The Glorious Revolution established a constitutional monarchy because William and Mary were allowed to rule, but only if they signed the English Bill of Rights, which established a constitutional monarchy. This just meant that the par that Parliament and the King and Queen agreed to share power together. So we don't have an absolute leader anymore. We have a, a King and a Queen sharing power with the two Houses of Parliament. You guys will look at the English Bill of Rights a little bit later on, probably like right after you're done with this. So, your goal for this was to explain all three aspects of the revolution model for the Glorious Revolution. Hopefully you can do that. Hopefully in your notes and on your revolutions note taker, you've got all that information down. If you don't, feel free to go back and rewatch portions or all of this screencast. Thanks.